Welcome to Worship La Casa family. Thank you for staying connected. As always, I am Connor Trotty. Today I'm joined with Craig Colleton. Craig, you are pivotal in La Casa de Cristo's involvement with Feed My Starving Children. I know we have another huge event coming up. What can you tell us about it? You know, Connor, we got a great event coming up in December. On December 16th and 17th, we're gonna be inviting 600 volunteers to help with our next mobile pack. That's amazing. And I know we've been doing this for a few years now. Historically, what has La Casa's involvement with Feed My Starving Children looked like? Well, you know, Connor, we've been involved with Feed My Starving Children for over eight years. During those eight years, we've had five mobile packs, and I'm really uh, proud to say that we have packed and provided for over 1.3 million meals for starving children around the world. That is so amazing, and it takes a lot of people to produce that kind of output, that kind of impact. So for, we need as much help as we can get, and if people want to help out, where do they go? How do we get started? Well, Connor, I'll tell you what, there's a registration button under the ministry section on our website, and you can go ahead and register your family, your friends, your, your neighbors, anybody that is interested, because this is just going to be a great event. The significance really is when you take a look at some of the statistics, like 6,200 children dying on a daily basis under the age five, that should really pull everyone's heart. So what we're doing is providing for nutritious meals for starving children around the world. So lock those dates into your calendars. December 16th and 17th is our next mobile pack. And if you're interested, please go ahead and register on the website for that event because the slots are gonna go uh, fast. Thanks so much and we appreciate all your help and your support. Well, Gene, it's been so wonderful seeing so much of you this October. There's so much going on in your amazing health and wellness ministry. What is coming up next? Well, on Tuesday, November 7th, Jan Hertzfeld from the Area Agency on Aging will be doing a six-week program on diabetes, pre-diabetes, and anyone who wants to know about the disease. You can go online to register for that class as displayed right here. And Jean, I know that we also have something else coming up pretty soon after that. What else is going on? Two days later on November 9th at 10 a.m., Tyler White, who is an elder law attorney, will be coming to talk to us about what documents we need to have in place to protect our assets and to prevent probate. And there is no sign up necessary for this class, so we hope to see you at both or either of these amazing classes coming up for our health and wellness ministry. How do I keep changing shirts? Well, anyways, one last thing. Later this Sunday morning, which could be today depending on when you're watching, both at 9.15 and 10.30 a.m. in Classroom B, we have a special guest speaker from Lutheran Advocacy Ministry in Arizona giving a presentation on one of our most core values as Christians, to love thy neighbor. Now, we all know what that is, but what does it mean truly? And how is it happening today? And how is it happening here all across our valley? We hope that you attend so you can find out. And the best part of all, I hear they're giving away donuts. So you all have a good worship service. I'm gonna go grab a donut. Hope to see you there. Well, good morning and welcome to worship. I'm so happy to see you all on this beautiful Reformation service. It's one of those things where you wake up in the morning, glad to be alive, glad to be in Arizona, glad to be a Diamondbacks fan. <laughs> so if you could all stand and lift your voices in song. those walls that we call sin and shame they were like prisons that we couldn't escape but he came and he died and he rose those walls are rubble now remember those giants we call death and grave they were like mountains in our way, but he came and he died and he rose. Those giants are dead now. This is our God, this is who he is. He loves 
These guys do a great job for us all the time, all right? So. I'm gonna ask you to be seated. We have a very special leader for our children's message today. Miss Jennifer is gonna lead the children's message. So invite the kids to come up and join her up here. Come on up. So if you're a child of God, or if you're a kid, come on up, come join me. Yes, oh, please, please, please. I need some, yes, I, I promise I don't bite. Let's see, I'm going to come this way, and then I'm going to come this way. Oh, hi, Doug. <laughs> okay, well, here's my question. Uh, is there anything special about today? No. Nothing? No, you got nothing? Nope. No, no. Let's see, did you do trunk or treat yesterday? Yeah. Yes, okay, that was special. That was special. So do you see a couple of people are wearing red around here? Do you see that? She Okay. She said it was the Diamondbacks. Well, there is that. That's exciting. Woohoo! So, um, so in this church, it's called Reformation. And on Reformation, you wear red. Isn't that cool? That's kind of a cool, like everybody wants to wear red. And um, I went with a bunch of friends of mine to a place in Germany just recently in October. We went to a place called Wittenberg, which is in Germany. I think there's going to be a picture on the screen. Uh, no, no picture. Okay. Well, I know. It's crazy. Well, I went with a bunch of my friends, and we went to this huge cathedral in Wittenberg, which is where, have you ever heard of a guy named Martin Luther? Okay, yeah. Yeah, he said Martin Luther King Jr. Actually, that was a little bit later. So Martin Luther was kind of the kind of the guy who wrote all about the Lutheran church because Martin Luther, get it? Hey, okay. So, oh, there's a church. There it is. It was so beautiful. And, and, and look at that ceiling. So if you can imagine, they didn't have machinery that we do nowadays. They had to do everything with ladders. Isn't that crazy? And, and that beautiful, beautiful church. And in the very back, you can see pipes. And if you were to go into the sanctuary, you'll see pipes above the altar. And then there's our good friend, Dr. Jeremy Peterman at the organ in Wittenberg. Now, I'll tell you a secret. You can, you can hassle Jeremy afterwards. He was disappointed at that church because he had to play the organ in his tennis shoes. 
So, <laughs> so in Germany, are people different? I mean, aside from language, are they are they completely different people in Germany? No, no. Good answer. They're just like us, right? They just they walk and they talk and they and they have babies. Oh, I I need Doug. Come here, come here, because I need you to see see how cute Kinley is in her little Diamondbacks outfit and her little pants. Okay, this is a fashionista. Hold her up, Doug. Look at that. <laughs> So, um, but I really want to tell you is that in all together, people, people are just people, right? And they're, and they have babies and they, and, and so I have to tell you, um, some of our, in, in over, we're going to sing a song later on in the service called A Mighty Fortress and it has a German name and it's Ein Festeberg. And so if you see right up there, that's at Wittenberg. And if you can see that little band around that, it actually says Ein Festeberg, which means a mighty fortress. And so Martin Luther actually wrote that hymn. He didn't write the one that we're gonna sing. I know that surprises you. But um, yeah, so I wanna say that a lot of the hymns have different names, just like me. I have a different name. I have a Chinese name my grandpa gave me. My Chinese name is Zhu Han Wat. My brother's name is Zhu Zhao Tech. So uh, those are different names, even though most of you know me. Nobody actually calls me by my Chinese name, not even my brothers. But I do have another name that I, that I would answer to. And so just like that, it's like different things about different people, but we're all eventually the same. So let's pray. Dear Lord, thank you for the blessings you give us each and every day and for the blessings you give people around the world as they need your comfort and your and your the goodness that you bring to their lives to watch over them as they go forward and behind them as they need your help. And all these things we ask in your most holy name and all God's people said, Amen. Amen. All right, thanks for coming up and joining me up here. You know, uh, I told Jennifer when she went on the trip, the price of doing that was she had to do a children's message. So, uh, but actually, can we give her a hand? She did a great job for us today. So. And now we're blessed at this time as our church keeps growing. We've received new members at all of our worship services this weekend, our four worship services beginning last night, and we will receive them at this service. So if you're one of our new members in our new members uh, group, if you would come forward at this time and join me up here, I know you're here, so come on up, don't be bashful. There we go. All right, come on up. Come on up, guys. All right, and uh, we are so grateful for these individuals. And in the handout you got today, um, you'll see more information not only about these folks, but all of our new members who joined this weekend. And we're so blessed today because not only do we have these new members joining us, but we also have three baptisms at our noon baptismal service. So God continues to bless us here at La Casa de Cristo. I'm gonna ask our folks that are joining, is it your intention to join La Casa de Cristo at this time to serve with us in proclaiming the gospel in our city, our state, our nation and world? If so, answer yes by the help of God. And I'll ask you, as the community of La Casa de Cristo, the La Casa de Cristo family, will you support these individuals as new members? Will you work with them and all of our new members that you see this morning in the handout, working side by side for the kingdom of God here on earth? If so, would you answer yes by the help of God? Let's pray together. God, we are so grateful for these new members. We are so grateful for all of our members here at La Casa de Cristo. We are all the body of Christ, and each one of us is an important part of that. And so we are so grateful for the gift of these individuals who have come to join us on our journey together. Help us to reach out to them and grow in grace. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, what I'm going to do in just a second, we're going to uh, let you come out of your seats, greet a new face. I want you particularly to greet our new members, but let's welcome them with a La Casa welcome here today. Congratulations to each one of you. We're so grateful for you. We're so grateful for you and grateful that you have chosen to join the family here at La Casa and grateful for your presence in our midst. Let's greet them and each other by sharing God's peace with each other.
Feel free to stand or sit as you're able. We're just going to sing another worship song before we go to the Word this morning. Lift up the mighty name of Jesus. Everyone needs compassion, the love that's never failing. Let mercy fall on me. Everyone needs forgiveness. Kindness of a Savior, the hope of nations. Savior, He can move the mountains. My God is mighty to save. morning. It's printed on page 770 in the Bible in the back, reading Acts, the first chapter, beginning with verse 1. In my former book, Theopolis, I wrote about all that Jesus began to do and to teach until the day he was taken up to heaven. After giving instructions through the Holy Spirit to the apostles, he was chosen. He had chosen. After his suffering, he showed himself to these men and gave men convincing proofs that he was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, while he was eating with them, he gave them his command, Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. For John baptized with water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at this time going to restore the kingdom to Israel? He said to them, It is not for you to know the times or dates the Father has set by his own authority, but you will see power when the Holy Spirit comes on you, and you will be my witness in Jerusalem and in all of Judah and Samaria and to the ends of the earth. After he said this, he was taken up before their very eyes, and a cloud hid from his sight. They were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
Thank you, Brenda. I'm going to break character here for just a moment before uh, we get into the word and a prayer. Some of you may know this about your pastor and some of you may not know this, but uh, I love sports and the sport that I love above all else is baseball. I was at Bank One, what it was called then, Bank One Ballpark in 1998, and my wife and I were blessed to be at Game 7 in 2001, and all I have to say is this to you folks today, and I hope that you are all on board with this and we can agree as the body of Christ. Let's go D-backs! Woo! Now, the real reason we're here, let's pray together this morning. Lord, we are so grateful for the opportunity to gather in fellowship this morning, all that's gone on on our campus this morning, with our youth, with our adults, with our parents, uh, with our music, with the celebration that we have. We thank you that we're a part of this community of faith, and we ask you bless us in this time together of worship that we focus on you. In Jesus' name, amen. There's a, a real sense of unease across our nation and our world. And maybe it has to do with the fact that there are now two major wars going on. Maybe it has to do with a challenging economy for many people who are just struggling to make ends meet or figure out how to buy groceries. And in the midst of that, I notice that it affects everyone of all generations. If we look to our young people, I see it that our young people are trying to find meaning in their life, and they're not necessarily finding that by following established patterns that parents or grandparents did or following established career paths, but they're trying to find spiritual meaning in their lives. And I see it amongst middle-aged people who, despite maybe having the facade of success and having a nice home and a nice car and a good job, there's something missing in their life. And they can't quite put their finger on it, but there's something and someone named Jesus who is missing. And I see it amongst people who are of retirement age. And they've reached that stage in their life where maybe their working years are behind them, but they're searching for meaning too in their post-working career. And that was all summed up by a lady who said to me several weeks ago, you know, Pastor, I'm not sure. I'm not sure if I'm fulfilling the destiny and the purpose for which I was born. I'm just not sure. And in the midst of that, we come today on this Reformation weekend, and I'm not going to preach to you a typical Reformation sermon. I'm not going to talk about history. I'm not going to talk about Martin Luther, but I'm going to talk to you about what empowered Martin Luther and what empowers all of us, and that is the gift of the Holy Spirit. You heard it clearly read in the lesson that Brenda just read for you about that book of Acts, and there are two words today that I want to give to you, two words that hopefully you will remember in your daily life when you're looking for power and meaning in your spiritual life. And those two words, those two words are very important. Wait and witness. Wait and witness. Witness and wait. Now let's go back to when Jesus told the disciples, you must wait in Jerusalem for the gift of the Holy Spirit. We are now 2,000 years later, and we don't have to wait for that gift of the Holy Spirit because it's already been given to us. But here's the problem. You and I, we're broken people, so this is what we do. We make God wait. Whereas God in Christ Jesus told the disciples to wait for the Holy Spirit, we're too busy, we're too distracted, we're running around, we, we don't know what the focus is or should be in our life, and so we make God wait when we have this powerful gift that has been given to us already. You want to know where you're going to find meaning in your life? It's not going to be found in trusting in the world. All you have to do is look at what's going on in the world and see what's going on. You want to put your faith in your jobs, your income, and the stock market? That's a pretty uncertain deity in your life. You want to put your faith in your relationships? Well, relationships have challenges. But the best relationship of all is the relationship that we've been given through the Holy Spirit. 
We wear red today not just out of tradition because the fire of the Holy Spirit is represented by red. And we as people, as Christians who are Lutherans, need to talk more about the Holy Spirit. We need to experience the Holy Spirit. And here's the problem. You know, Lutherans have been given the nickname the Frozen Chosen. The Frozen Chosen because we think about things all the time, but we often don't experience them in our hearts. So when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we'll say, well, well, I don't know how to experience the Holy Spirit, or I don't know what the Holy Spirit is, or can you give me a book or a Bible study about that? And you know, sometimes there's things in life, there are situations in life that we're not meant to figure out. We are only meant to experience them. And while it's always important to learn from Scripture, and be in a Bible study or a small group and grow together. We also have to understand that when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we will never figure it out completely. Scripture is pretty clear. It can come in a still small voice through the words of a neighbor, the words of a friend, through challenges with enemies. It can come in a variety of ways. It can come in a dramatic fashion. And that wasn't true just in the scriptures for many women and men, but it's also true in the here and now. And yet, what we want to do is analyze it. We want to analyze it. And, and often, sometimes, out of our faith tradition, we want to figure it out, oh, we're great talking about God the Father, and we're great talking about Jesus, but when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we struggle. And maybe part of that is we don't completely understand, it, and maybe part of it is we demand answers. And you know, sometimes there's things in life that we just simply can't understand. And maybe we're not supposed to figure it out. Maybe we're just supposed to experience it. That's what the first disciples did. And do you know what happened in that early church? The word for the church in Greek in that time meant movement. The church moved. After every worship service, they went out and fed the hungry. They clothed the sick. During the first pandemics of that time, they helped out everyone while all the other people, the non-believers, fled. If they had the means to, they left the area. It was the Christians who stayed behind to help those who were sick and suffering. It was a movement. And then over time, it got established, and traditions came in, and buildings were built, and institutions arrived. And I think many times today, we don't understand the church and the community anymore as a movement. We understand it only as a place with the traditions and the things we like and don't like. But we need to see through the power of the Holy Spirit that God comes to you and me. So we don't have to wait for the Holy Spirit. We just have to claim it. We just have to claim it in your life and mine. We don't have to wait, but here's what we do. We make God wait. We say, Lord, I'm too busy. We're too distracted. Too much is going on in our life when all we have to do is say, Holy Spirit, come into my life. Holy Spirit, be a part of my life. Holy Spirit, help center me, help focus me in my everyday life. We can't make God wait. And then we also understand this. We as Christians have the notion that somehow life should be easy, that we've been blessed by God, so everything's always going to be wonderful all the time. Or if bad things happen to us, we blame God. Now, this has been going on for millennia. You can look in the Bible at Job and many other people who went through these struggles. But the reality is, I don't see anything written in this book that promises us an easy life. I don't see the blessings of God ever defined as God doing nice things to us or for us. The promise is he is always with us in all things. You know, there's a story told of a pastor who was serving in a rural area, and there was a lot of farmers and farms in this area, and he was leading a men's Bible study one day. And so he had asked one of the farmers to pray before they began their Bible study. And when the farmer started out his prayer, the pastor opened his eye, one of his eyes, and was kind of looking to see what this farmer was going and where he was going with this prayer. Because the farmer started out and he said, you know, Lord, I really don't like buttermilk at all. I don't like buttermilk at all. And the pastor's going, where is this guy going with this? And then he goes on to say, and Lord, you know, I don't like flour at all. And, and he's like, okay, and now people are getting restless. Where's this prayer going? And he goes, and you know, I don't like lard either, Lord. I don't like any of that. That. And then the man taught them all a lesson because he said, none of those things individually I like, but when you mix buttermilk 
and flour and lard together, they make the most beautiful, warm biscuits. And Lord, we need to remember that when there are things going on in our life that we don't like, that you're always working together for good, that through the challenges, your Holy Spirit is coming. So we need to remember that because the gift of the Holy Spirit is not just for a couple thousand years ago with Martin Luther or going back even further. And, and so we need to understand that in your life and mind, that that power is there for us today. And we claim that power. And then there's the witness part. Now, when I say the word witness, many of you may make an assumption. You may think to witness to your faith is something that has to be verbal about the person standing on the corner shouting about Jesus in a judgmental way, or maybe it's about handing someone a pamphlet with a plan of salvation outlined in that. That's not how the Bible defines witnessing. The scripture defines witnessing as caring for each other, as reaching out in love, as sharing of ourselves unconditionally, unconditional love as Jesus gave us. And there's always discernment that we have to make in those times because sometimes we may have difficult family situations or difficult relationships and we have to set those proper boundaries and we have to deal with things in life that take place in our life. Sometimes there's addiction problems. Sometimes there's all sorts of issues. And so we have to be clear here. We always have to set those firm boundaries with people in our lives. But we are called to love and care. Love and care and share that unconditional love. Mark Huddleston is a man who suffers from a neuromuscular disease where he finds it difficult to walk properly. And he was still working with this disease and he had to fly from Chicago to San Francisco. And he knew when he got to San Francisco that he couldn't take a shuttle bus to this conference that he was doing a presentation at because he couldn't lift his legs properly to get on and off the shuttle bus. So the conference and the company uh, got a car for him and the car was going to pick him up there at the San Francisco airport. But when he walked outside on the concrete of the San Francisco airport, he fell over, he tripped, and due to his disease he couldn't get up. And all of his luggage had, had fallen all over and stuff had fallen out and he was lying there helpless. And he said he never forgot the stranger, whose name he never got, who came up to him and said five important words. How can I help you? How can I help you? He didn't rush in and assume what Mark needed. He preserved his dignity and ask him how he could help him. And Mark said, I need a hand up. I need some help gathering my things here. But no assumptions were made. And Mark said later, you know, that should be the mark of every Christian in our witness to the world, whether it's a believer or an unbeliever, whether it's a person we consider a friend or someone we're struggling with, that we should ask this question, how can I help you to represent the unconditional love of God in Jesus Christ? Witness and wait. Wait and witness. We have this powerful gift of the Holy Spirit, but when was the last time in your life that you turned to God and said, Holy Spirit, come into my life. Holy Spirit, help me with this situation. Holy Spirit, help me. You want to put your trust in the world? Put your trust in the world. You're going to be brokenhearted. You want to put your trust in your income, in your checking and savings account, in your life accumulation? Put your trust in that and see how far that gets you. You want to put your trust in friends? Friends can betray you. Family members can let you down. But with the gift of the Holy Spirit, we are called to be that witness. And there is one thing more today and always that we need to understand. You know, um, I don't know, probably four or five weeks ago, this lady came up to me and said, Pastor, she said, I just want to tell you something. She goes, I love La Casa de Cristo. And she said, you know, I have never heard a church talk about money less than La Casa de Cristo. And I told her, we normally talk about that twice a year. We talk about it in the fall 
with our ministry fund and we talk about it in the spring with our building fund and of course yeah. if there's a disaster or a special relief effort or some place in which we are called to reach out. And today when you were handed all the information at the door you also received your pledge card for next year. We ask you pray over that and consider what income you can give to the church next year. That amount is your decision. No one will tell you what to do with that. No one will force you to do anything you don't want to do. But that helps us know what our budget is for the coming year. And I want to tell you a very personal story about something that happened to me three and a half years ago that taught me a lesson, because we're always learning new lessons. When the pandemic hit, as we all know, it was chaos. And I gathered with the elected leaders of this church, the Board of Trustees, and we literally didn't know what was going to happen. We thought maybe our income would be down 50%, 75% or more, that we would have to lay off staff, that we didn't know what the future would hold. And I remember that was a difficult meeting, but in the meeting we came to the mutual conclusion that the Bible says when we seek first God's kingdom and righteousness, that everything else will be added unto us as well. And we established the Good Samaritan Fund to go out to the least among us and the last and the lost to continue to pour out. We collected groceries for people in need. And we as a church put our priorities where scripture tells us we always should put our priorities. And since that point, God has blessed us. Now, I'm not saying we're flushed by any means, but we're paying the bills, and that is because we have put our focus in the place it needs to be. If you do that in your personal life, I will guarantee you the same thing, that God will always provide for us. But that's part of our witness as well. So we encourage you to do that. Sign up for the Feed My Starving Children packing event. Look at all the mission opportunities we have in this church. Ask these five words, how can I help? How can I help? How can I help? And recognize that we cannot make God wait, but we need to claim that Holy Spirit power. If you're having a problem in your life right now, all you have to do is ask that he comes into that situation. And it may not resolve it exactly the way you want it or in that time frame, but it will give you peace. The peace that surpasses human understanding. You want to know how to seek power in your life? Jesus and Paul never looked to Rome for solutions. Everyone wants to look to our political leaders for solution. I don't care who it is they will let us down. People want to look to money and affluence for their security. It's a pretty uncertain deity. People want to look to families and relationships, and those are important things that we should honor and we should love and grow. But there can be brokenness and death and despair and divorce in those situations as well. Put your trust in him. Claim the power of the Holy Spirit and know this, that today and every day is not about just wearing red, and it's not just about traditions, but claim the power, don't make God wait, and witness to Him. How can I help? Amen. We worship at this time with our morning offering. Many of you bless us electronically. And we thank you for that. Also, the ushers will pass the plates and give you the opportunity to give that way if you desire. And we also share in a special musical offering. After the plates have been passed, we invite you to stand or sit as you desire, whatever your worship posture is. Uh, it is freedom in the Lord to do what you desire.
Good morning, Father. As we come to you today, we are so grateful. Grateful for the gift of your Holy Spirit. Help us to not make you wait upon us, but rather claim that power in our everyday lives. And then be your witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. Help us to know that this power is the power we need. Not earthly power, not power as we often define it, but the power that can come only from you. As we gather today, O oh God, we thank you for this place. We thank you for this community. We thank you for all who lead us. We thank you for our volunteers. We thank you for our staff. We thank you for all who serve behind the scenes and in so many ways. And as we gather today, oh God, we also lift up the members of our community that are hurting in any way. So we lift up to you Kay Trumper, who is hospitalized. We lift up to you Gary Reisinger, who is hospitalized. We lift up to you Mark Hayden, who is in the rehabilitation hospital. We also, oh God, lift up to you all those who are recuperating at home and all those who are continuing their journey with cancer, that you would surround them with the healing that they need wherever their needs are in their life. God, for those in hospice care, Donna Wheeldryer, Marcy Hans, and Donna Lagerquest, that you would surround them with your light and promise, and for those that are grieving, God, that you would send the power of the resurrection into their lives for Kathy Jensen and Walter Yu. God, as we gather on this day, we come to you just as we are. We are broken people, we are people that often turn our backs on you and each other, but help us to be renewed by the power of your Holy Spirit and help us to together pray the prayer that your son taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. May God bless us with his light and his love, not only in this place, but as we go out into the world to serve him and ask others how we can help. Let us remain standing as we so desire or sitting as we desire as well for our closing song as we proclaim God's praise. will see, through you the mute will sing, through you the dead will rise, through you all hearts will praise, through you the darkness leaves, through you my heart breathes, I am free.
wonderful.